So the other day I said that somebody asked me to show you the chickens and I didn't have any idea what I would talk about. Well, I finally figured out what we could talk about. So I thought I'd show some chickens. We'll give them some grass here. That kind of makes them happy. You can hear one squawking over there. That means that she's uh, she was laying some eggs. Or in the process, they get real noisy. So the uh, they like it when I give them a little bit of grass. They've actually gotten used to the mower. I can run the mower up against this as long as I'm throwing grass in. They'll stay right there to eat the grass. So you can see the different colored ones. So like the white ones, those are called Brahmas. I never can remember the breed of the rooster, but the black one is the rooster. And then all the other colored ones are, are just mixed breeds, primarily Easter eggers, ones that produce colored eggs. So we always get green and blue eggs. It's kind of neat. It's getting that time of year where we need to start considering what we're going to do this year for chicks. Now last year we had planned on raising chicks, incubating some chicks, but Carolyn's son came by and stayed with us. So we decided not to do it last year because it was just been too much trying to get the camper set up, get the chickens organized, get everything set up the way we needed. Plus I was working on a solar panel so he could have air conditioning here. So it was just not a good idea. The problem with that is, is it set us back. We want to have three age groups of chickens. The oldest, the middle, and the youngest. So that means we have to incubate every year. So what I would like to do is, in the springtime, incubate some eggs. So that gives us three age groups throughout the summer. And they're all producing eggs, and we get lots of eggs. And then in the fall time, I would butcher the oldest ones. The middle-aged one, the one that are a year old, would go into what's called a molt. They'd lose their feathers, and they stop producing eggs during the molt. Eight to 12 weeks, something like that, is how long that lasts. And then they slowly start producing eggs again. But the youngest group, since they're so young, as long as you get them incubated in early spring, they'll produce eggs all year long. As soon as they start producing, like in August, they won't stop because they don't go through a molt. And so then the next year you would do the same thing. Every year you're butchering and every year you're adding. Like I said, last year we didn't do it because of the, the, her son showed up. But prior to that, we lost our oldest group of chickens. A dog attacked them and killed all of them. So the only thing we had was the, the newest chickens. Well, now they're a year old. That means next year, if we were on this plan, these chickens would start to get butchered. The chickens that got killed would be getting butchered this year. So I, I really want to get on this plan and we are eating a ton of eggs and to the point they're not keeping up with us anymore. So Carolyn would like to get more chickens going to get more eggs. So I said Easter eggers, I meant Americanas. They're not Easter eggers, they're Americanas. I don't know how much difference there is between them. I know that nowadays they say there's a difference, but I think in the olden days, Easter eggers and Americanas used to be the same chicken. So to give you an idea of the color of our eggs, you can see we have a wide variety of colors. So blue and kind of a green. The problem is, is we have mixed breeds. So there might be Americanas mixed in with, uh, oh, I, I don't know, just because we incubated. Now we don't wash our eggs. I know people think that's gross, but you shouldn't wash your eggs if you're not gonna refrigerate your eggs. They'll last three weeks unrefrigerated if you don't wash them. They have this coating on them that protects them during incubation. If you wash that coating off, they'll rot right away without refrigeration. Europeans don't wash their eggs, even in market. Carolyn's really getting this camper set up the way she wants it. Got all her canned goods on a shelf now. So this year, we're not going to put the chicks in the tiny house. Every other year that we've done it, we've put the chicks in the tiny house. And it just causes us to be so cramped. But now we also have the cat. And so I'm not really sure how the cat's going to react to the chickens. So what we're going to do is 
bring them in here and I'll explain the whole setup. So there's our incubator. Everybody always wants to know what our incubator is. It's Nurture Right 360. You can get it on Amazon or you can get it at Orschland's. I think Orschland's been bought out now by different companies. So we're gonna eat, raise them in here. Once they're incubated, we'll put them in here. And this thing lifts up, I'm not gonna do it, but the top of this lifts up and leaves, leaves us a, a space, a storage space. So we're gonna insulate this and put the chicks in here. Now, we've learned a lot about chickens, or chicks, raising chicks, incubating chicks. Everybody says you gotta have a heat lamp in there. Well, we, we don't have the electric to run a heat lamp. So what we used to do in the house would we take these gallon jugs and we'd fill it up with hot water and I would do that every several hours and put it in there but the thing I noticed is is when the bottles would cool off and I didn't do it or I forgot to do it they didn't really seem to care they were fine now I realized it's a little bit chillier in here than it would be in the tiny house because we had heat in the tiny house but when the house is 60 degrees at nighttime and their bottle got cold they'd be fine the only time I ever saw these chicks suffer from the cold was one of those water bottles leaked one time and got the whole thing wet they all got wet but we instantly got up in the middle of the night cleaned out their coop whatever you want to call it and dried them off with towel as much as possible and they all survived they were fine I felt bad it happened but other than that so I don't think we're gonna need a lot of heat. So what we're gonna do is several things. Insulate this, for example. And then we have this old chimney, clay chimney thing that we had on our property. The place was a trash pit when we moved here. So this will hold heat pretty good. So we'll insulate this too, and then they can go inside that and keep warm. And their own body temperature will raise the temperature and they're probably 10 or 15 degrees. And I know that because in the chicken coop, which is a metal chicken coop, there's no insulation in it. I put a blanket over it in the really cold temperatures. Just a blanket, one that we got at Goodwill. And I left them in there, like negative six degrees. I left them in the chicken coop, but I didn't let them out. And I would go in there and change out their water every few hours and change out the light. We had a battery operated lantern. I changed all that out. I put my head in there and it was warm. The water didn't freeze. So I measured the temperature in the one time. It was, I think, 36 degrees, if I recall. So negative six. And on the other side of the blanket, their body temperature raised the coop temperature just with a blanket to 36 degrees. I thought that was pretty phenomenal. So the same thing will happen with this kind of concept. We're going to incubate 22 of them because that's what our incubator holds. So. We're getting about eight to nine eggs a day. We got nine eggs yesterday, but they broke one. So we'll start saving them. That'll be in about three days. We'll have enough to fill the incubator. I can run the incubator off the solar panels and batteries at night, no big deal. I mean, it heats up, but the thing you have to understand is the heater doesn't run the entire time. I forget what wattage it was, but it, it really was not hard to, to incubate. And then here's the thing is depending on how many we get we may do a second batch so let's say we start here in the beginning of March three weeks later they incubate if we get 22 chicks eggs to hatch then we probably won't do anything but if it only 15 like the last time we incubated we only got 15 out of them then we'll do another batch you got to consider the roosters half of them are going to be roosters just guarantee it's it's half so if we get 22 eggs to hatch that means that 11 of them will be hens and 11 of them will be roosters but last time we had 15 and that left us seven hens and roughly seven roosters I mean obviously one of them had an extra uh, one in it I can't remember which was it was the hens or roosters so it depends on how many we get, but it, I asked Carolyn for a specific number. She won't give a specific number, but whatever the number is that she feels comfortable with. And then we'll set up the uh, chicken coop again. 
to separate the big chickens from the little chicks. That way, the little chicks can become adults before we integrate them. Because the big chicks will kill them, especially with that rooster in there. And then when we start getting maturity of the new roosters, that'll be even worse. Now, my concern is, is if we incubate a batch, and then three weeks later there's another batch, wouldn't the older ones try to kill the littler ones? So I just Googled it. As long as the chicks are no more than a month apart, four weeks, you can mingle them together. The first batch will not get to go outside quite as quickly as the second batch because of temperatures. In three weeks, we won't even be out of March yet. Maybe April, depending on how fast we start incubating. It'll still be pretty cold at night and different things. But you figure that the second batch will be into June time frame before they get to go outside. So it'll be much warmer in June than it would be in April. My guess is, is the first batch will have to go outside around May and then right after that the second batch will go out there. It's a lot of work. I mean, it's, it's one of the things I dread doing is, is raising chicks. It's a lot of fun. It's really exciting when you start seeing those eggs hatch. But it is a lot of work. And I, I will admit that I try to minimize the amount of work that we have, but the thing is it's only for a few weeks. And then it's over with for a year. So it's as long as you can put it in perspective that it's not something that you got to do the rest of your life, it's not terrible. So we're going to get started on that today. So I'll start bringing eggs up tonight. We'll probably get eight or so. And then the next day we'll have 16. And the next day we'll have 22. We'll probably start incubating right at that point. And three weeks later, we'll start getting the chicks. Now, I know everybody wants me to set up a camera to show the hatching, but that just kills the algorithm on YouTube. It, it just doesn't work. You do those kind of things and people just don't like it. I might be able to do maybe a, some sort of live feed, and that wouldn't be too bad of an idea, maybe a live feed I could try. But other than that, I don't think I'm gonna make a separate video just so you might watch it. So if you'll click this up next box, it'll take you to a video where I was talking about the state of, well, it was a rant. So I hope I can inspire you to not work hard when you're living your dreams. Thanks for watching.